Oh yeah, a brand new series. Now, I've called this series, I've called it Faith Formation. Not two words, but one word, Faith Formation. Faith Formation, say it. Faith Formation. Faith. Can you say it? Good. Uh, and, and we're going to be talking about how faith is formed in us. And I know that might shake you a little bit. You go, oh, wait a minute, I've never seen that before. You will before this message is out. And I've called this particular message this morning, I've called it substance abuse. Substance abuse. Now, I know that normally substance abuse relates to either illegal, illegal drugs or legal drugs. When you abuse something like drugs, it's called uh, substance abuse. But this morning, we're going to look at something else that I believe is an abuse of substance in the first of our series called Faith Formation. So we're going to be laying a good foundation this morning. I want you to make sure that you take notes. Make sure that you watch this again. Make sure that you get this message into you because that's where it has to happen is on the inside of you. And I want to go, um, we're going to go to a scripture in a moment, but I just want to lay the foundation for faith formation and talk a little bit about faith itself. I believe that faith has been abused in this way. Faith has been seen almost like a force. It's almost like, in some cases of Christian circles, it's almost like, I don't know if you ever saw that movie Limitless, I'm not plugging it, but, you know, the guy takes this pill and all of a sudden he can just do phenomenal things. He's so smart that he's, you know, going to Wall Street, investing, and he's, everything's going right. It's like uh, some kind of a, 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 a hyper, if you will, extreme uh, kind of a cocaine if, or something like that. It's a drug. He gets a hold of this, and he's like a superhero. And so many times in Christianity, faith is presented from an outside source, if you will, almost like it's a, it's a power or a, a force like Star Wars or something. That we're going to grab a hold of it, you know, and grab our lightsabers out. We're going to do battle because we've got faith in our hand, and we can do amazing things if we just get this substance or this, this force into us, almost like a drug. And it's become likened to, uh, like I said, a superhero drug. It's become about something rather than someone. The focus is on a force. The force is the power instead of a person being the power. And I want you to, uh, I want to answer three questions this morning. One of them, the first one is, well, what is Bible faith? The second one is, how do we increase in our faith, our Bible faith? And then the third one we're going to answer is, what does it mean to live by faith? I want you to go with me to Hebrews chapter 11. I'm so thankful that God gave a definition that we can grab a hold of when it comes to Bible faith. And a lot of us have put this one to memory. I memorized it in the old King James. I'm going to read it uh, out of the new King James this morning. But uh, this is the definition of Bible faith. There is a, a natural world faith. I know people use that uh, term faith in the world. Not so much, really, because it has almost a, a, a religious connotation. You, you hear people say blind faith because, you know, you're doing something that you can't see. Uh, it, it's almost like uh, the word risk. I had somebody come to me uh, a few years back, and they said, Oh, Pastor Ed, uh, we're so excited. There was a, a couple, and they said, we're, we're stepping out in faith. And I said to them, Really? Like, what are you doing? And they go, we're going to buy a house that we really can't afford. And I said to them, well, call it something else. Don't call it faith. I said, did God tell you to do that? They go, no, no, we don't have a word from God on it, but we're really stepping out in faith. Well, call it risk. There are a lot of people that risk everything in the world. Some of them are billionaires. They've gone broke several times. Uh, but on the way there, they've, they've risked everything. That's called risk. It's when you don't have a word from God and you step out. And there's nothing wrong with risk. I've risked a lot uh, over the years without calling it faith. But faith only comes one way. That's by hearing and hearing by the word, Romans 10, 17. Uh, so that's real Bible faith. And the definition for the faith that we're talking about starting this morning in this series called Faith Formation is here in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. And I want us to put this to memory. I think it would be a really good thing for you to memorize this. And it says this. It says, now faith is 
the substance, that's where we get substance abuse from, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You know, it's interesting because that word substance in the Greek language, it's this, it's hypostasis. Hypostasis is a great word. And, and what hypostasis is translated in, in, in other scriptures is the word person. It's not, substance is not like I'm going to pop a faith pill and I'm going to be faith man. It's not even memorizing scripture so that I can parrot the Bible, as some would say, so that I've got this incredible faith because I know the word of God. You know, you can train a parrot to, to memorize scripture. Huh. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. But the parrot doesn't have any faith. You can memorize the Bible. The, the devil knows the Bible. He, he knows scripture backwards and frontwards, but it's not... That doesn't mean that he's got faith as we're talking about Bible faith. We have to realize substance is a person. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. Listen to this. This is so exciting. It's talking about Jesus here. It says, who being the brightness of his glory, and that's the express presence of God, the brightness of his glory and the expressed image of his person. Person is hypostasis, same word that's used now. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is not a force, but it's a deep-seated trust in a person. Not some outside thing, but an inside job. Colossians 1, verse 15, listen to this. The Son is the image of the invisible God. Image is person, again, hypostasis. The Son is the hypostasis of the invisible God. He is the person of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Christ in you is your only hope of glory. In fact, every aspect of Hebrews chapter 11, uh, verse 1 that we read, now faith is the substance of, of things hoped for. Every aspect of that definition of faith points back to a person. Not some outside force, not something like a superhero drug, but a person, the person of Jesus Christ. We're going somewhere with this, but I really want to lay a solid foundation. And I'm going to ask you if you've uh, been taught other, in other circles about, you know, the word of faith and faith is a muscle and Faith is a force and how to, you know, get stronger in faith by getting the force and all that. I, I'm just going to ask you, just, just for this morning, can you please lay that down for a moment? Uh, my journey of, of growing in faith and discovering faith, it's been a very long journey. I started back in the 70s and uh, I was taught a lot of things that I've had to unteach myself over the years, in particular about faith. A lot of what I read and a lot of what I was taught, and a lot of popular things, that sermons that, that came my way that hit my ears, I, I almost wish that I hadn't heard some of that because it gets in you to the point where you almost become unteachable and God can't show you anything new or, or correct anything. And I'm just asking you right now, put, put the drug of faith down for a moment. Put, put your lightsaber down for a moment. Stop thinking for a moment about faith as something you're going to conjure up on the outside so you can, you know, do duels with the darkness of this world with your, with your you know, faith or something. I want you to, to for a moment, I want, you, I want God to really speak deeply to you that faith is an inside job. Psalm 71, 5, it says this, it says, For you have been my hope, sovereign Lord, my confidence since my youth. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, that even, even hope is a person. Even, even not just faith, but, the, but, but what we're hoping for is a person. Everything speaks about him. He is the center. He is honestly the best thing that ever happened to me. When I met Jesus Christ, that was it. That was, he is all that you need to conquer everything that you're facing. He's the bomb. He's the creator. He's the, you know, the alpha, the omega, the beginning, the end, the Lord of lords, the king of kings. He is everything. And guess what? He's on, he's on the inside of you. So faith is only as strong as your confidence in the one who is in you. 
Now, faith is the person of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Jesus is everything that you would ever hope for. That's why we preach this gospel. That's why I preach Jesus. The message of, uh, of Jesus Christ is the only message. Paul said, I only want to know one thing. Paul wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. And Paul said, I want to know one thing. There's only one thing that I want to know. Jesus Christ and him crucified. So when you give Jesus your heart, question, can you trust him? I, I mean, can you totally trust him? I woke up the other morning with that question, and it was just like, well, yes, of course I can. Well, then what is it that you're worrying about then? See, right now, whatever you're worried about is the area that you're not really trusting God. So what I say to you, <laughs> when you give Jesus the, the Christ your heart, can you trust him? And you go, yes, of course I do. Well, the measure of your faith is the measure that you're trusting him. The measure of faith is actually the measure of Christ being formed on the inside of you to a point where you trust him in every area of life. And the areas that you're not trusting him in are the areas that he's not formed in yet and the areas that you, you need to grow in in your faith. So how do I increase my faith? Faith is formed in you as Christ is formed in you. Listen to this. I know I'm throwing some scriptures out there, but I, I really want you to hear it from the word of God and not just my opinion. Uh, in Galatians 4.19, listen to this. My dear children, for whom I am again in pains of childbirth, until Christ is formed in you. This is where we get faith formation. He is being formed on the inside of you. And your faith has to do with how much of his formation or his form, if you will, has already been formed on the inside of you. Now we're all growing, which means we're growing in the formation of Christ and our deep-seated trust of him on the inside. We're all growing in that, so therefore we're all growing in faith. But I want you to really get this. Faith is not some outside deal that you've got to grab a hold of, conjure up. Uh, you know, it, it's just not out there somewhere. It's, it's in here. Your faith in Christ will cause the faith of Christ to be formed in you. I'll say that again. Your faith in Christ will cause the faith of Christ to be formed in you. Oh, how, how would you like to have the faith of Christ? We're going to look at that in a moment, but... You know, he walked on water. He raised the dead. He called things which be not as though they were, and that's what faith does. And, and, and he was a miracle worker. He was the embodiment. He was the full form. He was the 100% uh, the deal as he walked on the earth. He did all of that stuff, and he's saying to you, well, come on, let me get formed on the inside of you, and you will start to see more stuff happening on the outside, of course, as he grows and is formed on the inside of you. And the more that you trust and the more confidence that you have of him being formed in you, the more that you'll start to see the glory, because glory means the presence, the tangible presence of God on the outside of you. When uh, Lazarus was being raised from the dead, he was a good friend of Jesus and Martha and Mary's brother, and they come to the tomb, and they're begging him, don't, don't roll away the stone, because by now, it's been that many days that he stinks. Uh, you know, we can put that as a metaphor that life really stinks sometimes, doesn't it, if we're, if we're honest about that? But he wasn't afraid of a stinky situation, so he, he says, take away the tomb. And then he speaks out, Lazarus, come forth. So a corpse, they were expecting a, a corpse was going to be in there. This big odor was going to come blasting out, hit them all. I mean, it's the Middle East. It gets really hot. And, 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 and he says this. He says, if you would believe, you would see the glory of God. I told you that if you would believe, that you would see my glory, that you would see my manifest presence, that you would see the outcome of a fully formed Christ who is among you, walking among you, the embodiment 
of God, the image of the invisible God, the person of faith, the substance of things hoped for that they would only could hope for. He says, when he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Now, I don't just raise the dead. I am the resurrection. I am the person. I am faith. I am everything that you hope for. I'm the evidence of the invisible God. I'm the glory, the manifest presence of God. I want to, I will show you what that looks like, what the 100% deal looks like. I don't know if you've ever done, I don't like these things, jigsaw puzzles. I think, why do you have so much time in your hands that you would take something like an Alps, picture of the Alps, you know, some trees and a farmhouse and some ski slopes and all that. You know, there's a beautiful picture. Maybe it's a famous uh, painting of some kind. And, you know, take it and, 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 and mix it all up, pour it all out, make sure no pieces are together. And then build that thing. And look at it. Oh, there's some blue sky. Uh, I think this blue sky matches that blue sky, these little pieces. You know, there's different categories of, uh, of these jigsaw puzzles. There's beginner ones. Like for me, it'd be like three pieces. Okay, I can figure that out. Uh, you know, but when you get to the advanced level, you got thousands of pieces. It's going to take you a long time, I think, that is such a form of torture. I don't know why you would do that. I, I really don't get it. But anyway, to each his own, whatever floats your boat, whatever, whatever. Uh, but if you didn't see the picture, if you didn't get the box and see what it's supposed to look like, then you'd be pretty hard-pressed, I reckon, to put the whole thing together would be a much harder feat. If not impossible, I don't know. Perhaps you've done that. You can tell me. But... <laughs> Imagine if you didn't see the completed picture, how hard it would be to even get any of those pieces to match, because you'd be thinking, well, I don't know, like, this looks like it could be a tree, but it's not a tree, it's actually a, a field of green grass or something, it's supposed to fit over here. God gave us the complete picture. Wow. He gave us the picture of what it's supposed to look like and what we are supposed to look like. He gave us the picture, the person is the picture of Jesus Christ. As he is being formed in you, all of a sudden you start to see, man, I can see over here that there's a, a, a place where he causes me to lie down beside still waters. He gives us his word, which is a picture, so, so that we can engage our image maker, our imagination. We can start to see in the word of God what we're supposed to look like. And as we start to put the pieces together, don't beat yourself up over it. So many people are so hard. Oh, I, don't know. I just don't have any faith. I, you know, I just mess it up all the time. You're just trying to put the pictures together. Would you just lighten up? You, uh, people that, that know when I teach on preaching, uh, I've got two, two types of preaching that I really don't like. In fact, uh, I, I really don't like these particular types of preaching. One of them is sin preaching. Instead of preaching on the righteousness of God and the consciousness of God and how to, how to stand up rightly before God and how you're accepted, somebody just starts hammering. And you know, some of you, yeah, you, you, you that are sitting and you that are watching on television right now, you've watched things and you know, you just know that it grieves God. It does probably grieve God. But pointing your bony finger isn't going isn't gonna to make anybody rise up into righteousness Start to show the completed picture of what the person's supposed to look like. They'll rise up to that. Beat your kids up constantly. Beat your kids up. And, and, and you call that discipline. And maybe there is a place for it. I'm not saying that there's not. But beating them up consistently and constantly and telling them they're stupid and telling them how far short that they fall is not going to cause anybody to rise up and become anything. And so I don't like that kind of preaching. The other kind I don't like is what I call we should be messages. I'll tell you what we should be doing. You know, I'll tell you what you should be doing, brother. Not me, you know. <laughs> you should be reading your Bible more. I'll tell you another thing that you should be doing. You should be praying more. Don't we all know that? Couldn't we all pray more and read our Bible more? I'll tell you another thing that you should be doing. You should be sharing your faith a lot more than some of you don't, haven't shared your faith in a whole year. And then they always finish it with this. Well, I know I don't pray like I should. And I know I don't read my Bible like I should. But I'm just going to tell you what you should be doing. 
Well, if you're not doing it, sit down and shut up. You've got nothing to say. Don't teach me on prayer if you don't pray. Don't teach me on sharing faith if you don't share your faith. Don't teach me on it. I don't want somebody that's never flown a plane, thank you, to teach me how to fly a plane. I want a pilot to show me how to fly the plane. And God gives us, in his word, the complete picture of what we are supposed to look like. And as Christ is formed on the inside of you, then you become more bold. You become outwardly an expression of the glory of God. You start to see the manifest presence of God in dark and hopeless situations where there isn't anybody else that can step into that and maybe raise the dead situation or, or speak life into that. And that confidence comes through Christ being formed on the inside of you. Your faith in Christ will cause the faith of Christ to be formed in you. Therefore, how do we live? I'm glad that you asked that. It's the third question. Romans chapter 1, verse 17 says this, For the gospel... For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. That's the uprightness of God. When you look at the picture uh, on, on, on the box, so to speak, the, the picture of what we're supposed to look like, you see what upright looks like. You see what you're supposed to walk like through Jesus as he walks. The righteousness, the good news, the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. A righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. I love that. We are, so, we are to live by the deep-seated confidence of Christ in us. We are right already. God has given us right standing through his son on the cross. Like I said, everything from beginning to end is all about him. It's his story, history. Do you get it? It's, it's his story uh, on the inside of you. Colossians 3, 4 says this, when Christ, who is your life, he doesn't just give you life. It's not just something being formed kind of on the inside of you, like a little partial, oh, yeah, I hear people say, you know, I'll, I'll, I'm going to give it a try, talking about following Jesus. No, 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 don't even bother. This isn't like, which chocolates do you want? We've got the, 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 choc the peppermint chocolate. We've got the chocolate-coated cherries. We've got the praline chocolate. We've got some white chocolate. We've got some chocolate and cashews. Which one do you want? I think I'll try the, no, 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 no. You don't try this. You don't try Jesus. I'll give, I'll give him a try. No, no, no. He is everything or he's nothing. He is Lord of all or he's Lord of nothing, somebody said. And, and when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. There's that word glory again. You know, it's amazing when he is fully formed in you as, he, as, as the picture becomes more complete, as you're walking with him, you're hearing what he has to say. You're seeing what he, the action that he wants you to trust him in. And as you step out and do just the simple things that he, that he tells you to do, he drops that into mainly your knower. I call it your knower. I just know that I know that I know. Uh, and that's God speaking as he gives you uh, a dream or a vision on the screen of your, uh, of your imagination, and you start to see, this is what I'm supposed to do today. I'm supposed to go down to the restaurant, and I'm supposed to share my faith, or I'm supposed to pray with somebody, or whatever God shows you to do. As you do that, you step out and start to activate that, then a little bit more gets formed on the inside of you. You start to develop a, a, a deeper trust. That trust is called faith. It's developed on the inside of you. In John 11, and uh, we're going to, oh, never mind. I've already given you that one. Skip that one. Uh, but the glory of God is the manifest presence of God. It's, you'll start to see more glory, more manifest presence on the outside as you start to see him developed on the inside. So you are being transformed into the image of the glory of God. I'll give you this, just a, again, a definition uh, of faith. These are some statements that uh, I wrote down. Faith is a deep-seated trust that the greater one in you can and will do all things through you. That's my definition right there. Faith is a deep-seated trust that the greater one being formed in you 
will do great things, can and will do all things through you. In any given place and in any situation, any given situation, you are either showing up with him or without him. That's why the just shall live by faith. This is not something that I'm going to show up here with God and I'm not going to show up here with God. God's over here. He's in a box. I, I, I go to church. I got my church God. got my church voice, singing voice on. I got my church Bible. I got my Christianese talk. I got that nail. Bless you, sis. You too, my brother. Oh, glory to God. Isn't it a beautiful day today? Glory to God. It is a beautiful day, brother. It's, it's not about God over here, God over there, but no God over here, there. Wherever you go, your whole life, he's in you. You can't go anywhere where he doesn't go. He, you show up, he shows up. So the question about faith and how much faith do you have in any situation is how much are you trusting him on the inside of you in that situation? That means if you're going to school, you got uh, your fellow students that are there, you're, you're sitting in a, in a, a lecture, uh, lectures like physics and chemistry that I hated and I failed, uh, lectures like history that I should have paid more attention because I really love history now, didn't like it back then, lectures on accounting, I became accountant but didn't like that to tell you the truth, uh, all these lectures, he's in there, you got the mind of Christ, he's on the inside of you. Take some notes. Show up with God. Start to trust God that you'll start to understand those notes, those lectures, whatever it is. Believe that God is in every place that you go. He's in you because you are going there. And let something be formed on the inside of you. Make some progress on the inside of you as you step out your day. Let God, inch by inch, it says, everything is a cinch. The Bible doesn't say it, but it's a saying. It's pretty good, like, how to eat the elephant in the room, you know, one bite at a time, and all those kind of things. I think they're really good sayings. But let God develop inch by inch, so to speak. Let, let him in every situation start to trust him in, in the little things. Look in the inside of you and go, okay, I think that you're there. Let the complete picture of God be formed on the inside of you. Now that comes, obviously, through Bible reading and meditation and looking at him walking. So it says in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, it says how, how Jesus Christ of Nazareth went about doing good and healing all, not almost, the full embodiment heals all. Do you heal all? Well, you're not the full, you, 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 he's being formed in you. Do you understand that? You got him in there. Let him form, let him come out. And, and that trust will, but you start shouting things out, uh, where you're not fully formed, you don't have that confidence, it can come out your mouth and, and you can start doing stuff out of the flesh or zeal or because somebody preached you a we should be message and you bought into that, uh, whatever it is. If you're stepping out there and, and, he, and that's not formed on the inside of you, you're probably going to fall flat on your face. I've seen some really stupid things done, probably you have too, where people say, oh, I'm just exercising my faith. Well, maybe you will, maybe you won't, but we're going to find out. Because if he's formed in that area, you've got that confidence, then you're going to see the glory come out of that. Do you understand that? So when faith shows up, when faith, is in, when, when faith is in you and you show up, there's a conviction about the whole thing. So my question, and we're going to close, I, I, I've got a whole other part of this sermon that I, I'm just not going to get to this morning, but that's okay because we're doing a series, so I can, I can get there next week. Uh, so I just want to ask you this, is there enough evidence of the person for a conviction? Now, do you understand that in, in uh, the embodiment of law and law enforcement, they want to know, firstly, was there a motive for the crime, whatever it was? Was there reasonable cause? I'll ask you this, is there a motive in your life right now to let him be formed on the inside of you and to trust whatever is formed and to step out for even more to be obedient? Is there a motive? Is there a, is there a cause? Is there a reasonable cause in the criminal world to commit that crime? 
if there is, well, then I think we've got a case. I think we can go to court with this if, there's a, if we find a motive. The motive, yep, the motive, there was a big insurance policy, and, uh, you know, if he killed her, he got the, got the money. Uh, so there's definitely a motive there. I, is there a, a cause for this to have happened? Is there not a cause of Christ to motivate you and I to let more of him be formed on the inside of us so that we can step out even further. And then the final thing that they tend to look at, is there a body? Is there evidence? Did we find the body? Well, is there a body? And, and that body is you. Are you willing to be the body of Christ, hello, to let him be formed in you? And I'm going to close with this, and I'd like the music team to come up. And I, I want to challenge you with this question. And I'm very challenged by it. And it's not a we should be. This is a, it's a good challenge that I think you need to take up. And, and it's this. He has become the substance of your hopes, the evidence of your not yet seeing. My question is, would you be the substance of somebody else's hope? Do you understand this is not just about you. I know that you're facing things. Last week we talked about speaking to the mountain, but the mountain's actually just a big, giant fig tree of religion that needs to be removed out so that you can do the stuff. We talked about that. You can go and look at, uh, at that uh, last week. But uh, this week, are you willing? Are you willing to be the substance of somebody else's dream? I, I would like to think, that somebody, when I walk into the room, that somebody would go, oh, thank God Ed's here. I, was, I, was, I didn't know what to do. I, I, was, I was just beside myself. I, I was overwhelmed with hopelessness and despair. But thank God Ed is here. Why? Because Ed's something special? No, my friend. It's because God in Ed has been formed to a point where hopefully I can be the substance of somebody else's dream. I can be the person of things hoped for. I can be Christ in me. Do you get that? The evidence of, of things not seen. Or when you walk into a room, is there not even enough evidence for a conviction? I've got a conviction in my heart called faith. Because there's a body, and, and, and there's a person formed, and there's a motive, and, and there's a, a reasonable cause, the cause of Christ to go out and to be the substance, the person of somebody else's dream, the evidence of their not yet seen. I just wonder if you and all of us could, could think that way. This is so much that we could see so much as we start to see ourselves as the answer to a prayer, as the answer to hope, to a dream, as the person that God wants to raise up in the situation to solve that problem in your family, to solve that problem in your business organization, to solve those problems in your school, to solve those problems in the church, to solve those problems everywhere. God wants you to be his embodiment and to carry faith so that faith can be the substance, the person of things hoped for, the evidence in this world of things not yet seen. Amen and amen. Give God a big cl hand clap. Well, I want to pray, and uh, we, didn't get, we only got to the first half of that message. I kind of thought time would slip away, and it has, but next week, come back. I really, uh, I want to pray for you that are here and also those that are listening. If you've never given your heart to Jesus, this morning is your time, but give him your whole heart. He wants to step in and be formed in you and be the hope of glory on the inside, the presence of God coming out. You gotta give him your whole heart. You can't just give him part of your heart. And watch what God does. We were doing Alpha the other night and we had that scripture in John 3 about uh, our Revelation 3. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. There's a John 3, I forget. John wrote it. Uh, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone will open the door, I'll come in. We'll have fellowship. But you, you got to open the door all the way. It's not a part-time job. God's not, not looking for part-time followers. He's looking for full-time followers. And I wonder if that would be you this morning. So I'm going to pray simple prayer for those that have not yet asked him into your heart. You want to do that. Give him your whole heart. 
and, and watch what God does. Make him the Lord of your life. Don't try him. Give him your life. If that's you and you're listening, you want to do that. And maybe you're a partial person that's not yet fully committed. I, I invite you this morning to step across the line and give him your whole heart. Let the door fly open and say, Jesus, you come in. There's nothing. There's no closet in, in, my, room, in my house. There's no kitchen, living room, bedroom. There's not anything that you're, that there's no door shut on the inside of my heart that you can't walk through. I invite you into every area of my life. Let, let's just pray right now. Father, I thank you right now for every person that's listening. If you want to say this prayer after me, just say this out loud. It's not a formula. It's a prayer. Make it a heartfelt prayer. Say, dear God, I invite you. Come into my heart. I give you all of me. I thank you. Be formed in me. I give my confidence and my trust to you so that faith from the inside can grow and manifest on the outside. In Jesus' name, everybody said, come on, amen and amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Thank you so much for joining us online. Uh, I invite you, please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you already haven't. Just go over to YouTube, put, put City Church uh, Sunshine Coast in and subscribe there. Uh, and uh, you'll be blessed as you can get the content on there. It's all free. And we'd also love to know if you've tuned in for the first time, if there's anything that you need, please let us know. Send us an email at city-church.com, city hyphen church.com. Until next week, God bless you, and we'll see you again soon.